Hey everyone, welcome to Chasing the Kraken. This is a review of the Yoyo 1000 TVL 12 white light uh, fishing camera that is available on Amazon. Uh, links will be in the description. So um, it, it arrives in this box. Now, all I'll say about the box is the box is actually surprisingly well built. It's actually nice and sturdy. The only thing that I would say is that the feet on here, these they've got some small grip feet here and feet here, uh, they're kind of a hard plastic, so they're not exactly uh, grippy. So uh, if you want it to not slip around, you might want to have to put something on that. But aside from that, uh, we'll get you some images of the inside. But when you open it, what you have is the screen. You have this small piece of foam, which just protects the screen from the, uh, from the cable and everything. And inside, you will find uh, the contents. So let me go through those for you. All right, so first thing that you notice when you open it is, let's go straight to the battery. So this is the battery pack. This is a 12 volt, four and a half amp hour battery. Uh, I believe it's a sealed lead acid. And on the front here, there are four different, ca four different ports. So there's a spot for camera, then you have a spot for LED, which I'll talk about later, then there's 12 volt out, and then there's power. So I'll go through those when we get, get to the setup. Uh, in addition to that, you'll find a little charger, so a wall charger for the plug into the wall, and then of course the power outlet. So the power can go into the power port on the charger, and that's on the battery. That's what actually charges the battery, or you can put it through an auxiliary port, which I'll show you in a minute. I'm being a little cautious with this case, and I'll explain why in a second. But the uh, the spool of, of wire, so this one comes with 15 meters of cable, which I found to be ample. Um, it has basically a connection to the uh, the camera itself, which I'll get into. And then the spool, so the spool has a central hole, so you could use it to mount it on some sort of a, of a spooler, uh, some sort of a holder for it. And the cabling is actually held in place. It's got this Velcro sort of wrap on it. And at first I was a little bit, you know, not too sure about that, but actually it turns out to be really good. Uh, so all you do is you just spool out however much cable you want. Once you reach that amount, you take the wrap, just go around it, and it actually locks in the cable really well. So I was actually impressed by that solution. Pretty basic, but uh, effective. So that connects us to the camera. The camera is this sort of blue, gold, and, and silver uh, paint theme. You can see the LEDs on the inside. It comes with this little bar on the front. My understanding is you would put bait or something on this if you wanted to actually get images of fish coming up and nibbling on the front, like a close-up. Uh, for my purposes, I kind of bent it down a little bit just to make sure that it wasn't uh, getting in the shots. So, uh, and that's just sort of, you know, it's in there, but it's not super strong. Uh, and then on the bottom, you've got a, a small ring to mount a, a weight to it. So if you need a little bit more weight to get it down. And at the top, you've got two rings at the top and I'll show you where those go in a second. So let's just set this aside. Now, the thing about the case that I want to point out, we'll get to the, the screen in a second, is that uh, the case opens up at a nice angle, so um, you know it, it doesn't. You don't have to prop it open; it'll stay open. The trouble is, as soon as you remove anything like the the major components out of this, the whole case is extremely tippy. So it's very top heavy. So what you'd have to do is put some sort of a I don't know, ceramic plate or a little piece of steel or something in there to a couple of rocks, something to hold it down to keep it from, uh, from tipping over. I found any time I was messing with it in the ice hut, it always tended to want to tip back over. So you either keep the battery in place or you accept that. Now on the front here, you've got your screen. The screen actually has two tabs to pop it out. You just push those in, the whole screen pops out. Uh, thing to note, the screen, uh, once you pop it out, it doesn't have any type of camera mount. There's no GoPro mount, there's no, um, there's no standard camera post mount that you would screw into. It's just the screen itself. So if you did want to mount this, some, uh, say, to a tripod, you'd have to come up with your own mounting system for that. Um, that screen has a cable that comes out. I should go over the cables here in a second. Um, so the cable that comes from the screen has three different ends. There's black, red, and yellow. So black is your power cable. Uh, red is your auxiliary, which I'll, I'll talk about. And then yellow is for video. Likewise, on the camera, it's on the uh, camera itself. There's one black port for LED, one that's marked camera, and then one for video as well. So, in order to set this up, what you would do is you take out your battery, or in this case, I'll just leave it in. 
Uh, what I'm going to do is power, plug that into the power port. On this end, we're going to go yellow to yellow to get our cable connect, our uh, RCA connection. Uh, the one marked LED, now I'll show you what that looks like. So if I actually connect that, it turns on the LEDs on the, on the camera. I find this to be of limited use when I'm out on the ice because it just highlights all the little particles in the water. So if it's at night and you just want an idea if there's weeds at the bottom, that's a good option, but it's not very uh, practical for spotting fish, especially in Alberta lakes anyway. So let me just disconnect that. And then of course, the last cable you have on this one is a uh, camera. And that actually goes to the camera port. So that would actually provide power to the camera as well. So once you're all connected, you're pretty much good to go. Um, the red port is if you wanted to charge while you were uh, fishing, then you would use that. So you would take this, plug your, uh, your wall charger into your power port, and then you could power the whole unit uh, from a wall plug-in or from a generator or whatever you have, or if you have a, a power station. So once we take that aside, so let's just power this up. Try and tuck these wires in for you. Okay, as you can see, so there's my smiley face. Um, once you turn it on, you've got a couple options. This one, your screen ratio. Uh, and then this one here, this will actually rotate the camera. So if your camera was upside down or sideways, you could account for that. When you go to the menu, it allows you to change brightness, contrast, color, language, the screen ratio. Uh, we can rotate, uh, reset, and that's pretty much it. Then these other ones are just adjustment points and of course your power. So um, one thing that I did was I'll, I'll put some, some footage in here. I have to confess something. When I set it up, what I wanted to do was actually, uh, this didn't come with a DVR, so what I wanted to do was actually be able to record the video onto uh, my tablet. So, and I'm gonna break out that, that kit in a second. But the footage I'm going to show you was, was all shot. It con it's converted in the, with the DVR adapter to 640 by 480, which is really low res. So I um, had to return that one. I bought a better one on Amazon. I'll put all the links to all this stuff in the description. But just to say that uh, once you actually do it and they set it up right, you'll either be at 720p or I believe when I had it connected to my computer, I was 1080p with this adapter. So I'll go through that as well. yet so I'm not entirely sure what they're used for. These little rings, let me show you what that, how that works. You have basically three position options with your camera. If you have your camera out and you want to hang it directly um, from the cable, you can hang it straight down. This would be good if you're in shallower water or if you just wanted a top-down view of the fishing. That's one option. Um, and then if you put the ring on the back loop and you feed it through, when you hold the camera, you can see the camera is down on a bit of a, about a 30 degree angle. And that's pretty handy for getting a bit of a top view, a little side view, a little bit of everything. So depending on what you want. If you want to put the camera flat, what you do is go through, put this little plastic ring in. I'm not going to connect it, but you just snap it closed. And now the camera will sit pretty much, actually if this was tight, it would pretty much sit perfectly horizontally. So that's a pretty handy uh, thing. Overall, I found the camera was easy to use. A little annoying that it kept tipping over on me every time if I didn't have the battery in place. Um, the screen is nice. This is, a, I believe, a 7-inch screen. Uh, there is a way, like I'll show you how to export that or how to split the RCA uh, signal. Uh, put it on a bigger screen if you have one. But overall, for the value, I was really happy with it. I got it on sale on Amazon, I think, for like $140 or something like that. Um, what I'm going to cover in the next part of the video, though, are some different modifications. I, I built a 3D printed uh, camera panner as well as um, a little protective case for this if I didn't want to use this case. And then the last thing, and then of course I'll show you the DVR setup. Um, but overall, pretty happy with the camera, uh, happy with the way it uh, performed, and uh, no complaints. There was one little bug that I did notice. For some reason, every couple of minutes, I got a flash on the screen. 
Uh, it didn't show up on the video, so I think it's just this screen. But every now and then there's a flash, almost like as if like a silverfish went right past the script, right past the camera lens. Uh, just blink and you miss it. But it kind of happened every few minutes, every five minutes, every ten minutes. I don't know if it was a connection issue, maybe just the battery first time use. I'm not sure. Uh, it wasn't to the point that it wrecked the experience for me, but just want to let you guys know that that's the case. Okay, so as promised, I wanted to show you a quick couple of mods. Uh, number one is that what I found out is that um, in setting up for the DVR, you have a couple of things. One is that you can set up a DVR, which basically splits the signal from the camera, uh, both to the screen on the, on the unit, as well as to your laptop or computer, whatever you have. Um, you still need a battery to be able to power everything. Uh, but in addition to that, not only can you do a DVR, but you can actually run this whole unit with just the camera and your uh, and your laptop. You don't need necessarily the screen that comes with the box. So if the screen was ever damaged or for whatever reason you were to pick, pick up one of these used and, and all you got was the camera, you could still actually use it uh, functionally. So let me just show you what I have. So first things first is... When you have the the, uh, the RCA output from the camera, so it comes out at the 1000 TVL, and what you need to be able to do, if you need to split that signal to a DVR or some other method, uh, what you're going to need is a, is a splitter cable. This is just a basic one off of Amazon. It's one female and two males. So the RCA cable goes in here. If you were to run one of these to the camera, you could, let's say red one to the camera, and then white would go to um, the DVR connector. So this is the DVR adapter. Basically, USB port on one side and then a bunch of inputs on the other. All we're gonna use for our purposes is the yellow RCA. We would plug in this guy to the, uh, to the RCA cable. This one now, depending on your, on your, whether your laptop, if you have a USB port, or in my case, USB-C, I need this little adapter piece for it. So throw that on there. Now what I'm going to do is power on my tablet and plug this in through the side as a basically comes up with an auxiliary camera. You're still going to need power, so you're going to go in here, take your camera button, put it into the camera port, and then as you'll see, you now come up as uh, this camera now comes up as one of your cameras just in your standard camera app. You don't need a special app for it. You don't need to, to download anything, but it allows you to essentially use this as your DVR. And then for here, all I would do is record. And so as I'm fishing, if I wanted to catch capture the images, I can record directly onto my tablet. This little adapter will work for your, for your cell phone. You can work for a uh, laptop, whatever you have that you can record. Um, so basically all you need is the splitter cable. If you don't really need um, to split to the, to the, if you're just taking the camera, you don't even need the splitter cable. All you need is the DVR adapter. Um, now there were a couple on Amazon. One was like $11, which is the first one I bought. And that one basically just exports at 640 by 480. This one here is, uh, is listed. It was $20 and it says that it will export up to um, 720p. Uh, and when I connected it to my computer, I was actually getting 1080p. So um, this is the one you want. And let's just uh, shut that down so I can show you. Okay. So I'll disconnect that. So once again, in a pinch, all you need is the battery pack, you need the camera, and you need the adapter. So if you want to split the signal to go to your your, uh, your the screen that comes with it. Uh, you'll need a splitter, otherwise you just need this DVR adapter. And if you're going to USB, you need a small, uh, I think that's a uh, OTB, I can't remember what the word is for it. But anyway, uh, you'll need a little adapter to, the, to connect it to your laptop or your, or your phone. I would imagine, I can't speak for Apple, maybe it would work with a lighting cable, I'm not sure, but you need an adapter either way. And that's pretty much it. Oh, um, one other thing. So if you're going to carry the camera around, what I did was I created this little mount. It's a little cradle for it. I'm actually planning to put this in a case with my uh, fish finder and have all in one unit. Um, so all I did was, and I can, I'll share the files with it. I'll, I'll put it where I put it on, um, on Thingiverse. But all 
I did was I took an image of this camera and uh, imported it into my software, my drafting software, uh, created a, a blank for it, and then basically created this around it, and then you just sort of removed the material. It's kind of it's kind of interesting how it works. But anyway, so now when I'm going to protect this, because I don't want to scratch the screen, all this guy does slides in here. There's a little hole in the bottom for this uh, for the little weight mount. And then I've just got some Velcro straps that are kind of taped onto the side. And so now this unit, if I keep it in my case, will uh, protect my screen. Um, so yeah, so that's my little setup. I found that the image quality was much better. Uh, and I'll, like I said, I'll try and get some footage of that, but, uh, or in the future I'll, I'll have it set up. But once you have the proper DVR adapter, the footage is a lot better. All right, so that concludes our review of the YoYo 12 white light underwater fishing camera. Uh, that is 1000 TVL. This is the non DVR version, but as I showed, you know, it's pretty easy to set up a DVR setup for it as well. And uh, thanks a lot, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this review. Hope it's helpful. Uh, check out the, the links if you, uh, if you want. There are affiliate links. I was kind of mixed feelings about that. I had actually stopped being, a, having a, being part of the affiliate program for a while, but I thought, you know what, the hey, if I'm going to do these little videos, I might as well put it on there. It's a great way to support the channel if you use them. Otherwise, just use them to get to Amazon and uh, you don't necessarily need to use the affiliate part, part of it. But thanks everyone for coming along and let's get cracking.